Hey Google, take me to King Ranch. this truck remember I was looking for a deal I knew 2020s were coming out and but I wanted a deal because I wanted to be able to put whatever money I could save on my truck towards my RV to for you know so we could travel well I found this truck and it was black and it had the King Ranch interior the King Ranch package has everything you know grown package and everything I want but I thought black with brown you know I don't uh, done it you know looking in the pictures I'm just not sure I like that you know I was thinking more black with the black platinum interior like my friend Chris got but you know they were working with me they were straight and honest you've probably seen in my video so I said well you know this is for a function for pulling so I don't need to be too choosy well I got there the got the truck and Texas 286 South. got there and I got the truck and I'm like wow this is really nice I had no idea and it doesn't look aw awkward at all you know the brown with the black and I said that you know that surprised me and, and as I'm feeling I'm like man this leather is I mean I, I, I can't really like you can't feel it on the video but I mean it's quality. I couldn't be happier with this leather. Well, we went to what College Station with our daughter Grace for her to check out Texas A&M. And they had a King Ranch store there. I said, what? I don't know if you can see it. King Ranch. I have a King Ranch F450, so, I, <laughs> so it's neat to see. Huh? The ultimate purchase. He's so excited. <laughs> we had that partnership with Ford for about 20 years, but it's still a working cattle ranch. Uh -huh. The ranch itself. Okay. It's down in South Texas. Okay. So 150 years ago, they made their own saddles using the cowhide leather. And that and started it that all. That started the store. So the store. As a store has been around for maybe 60 years, but they've made saddles for the cowboys. They still make saddles today for their own cowboys. Um, about 150 years. Cool. It's really super cool. So cool. The fabulous King Ranch. That's what it looks like. Yeah, we gotta go see it. Yeah, we need to go see it. Wonder how many had a cow. <laughs> what did you get today, Shane? Well, <laughs> a lot of nice things in there, but. With the gloves, <laughs> hooking up the RV. Let me see. But even there, sixty-six. Oh, but they're so plush. Like, they are so plush. <laughs> so, <wrong. laughs> so we're in the uh, campus parking lot of. I don't know. This is Calvary Square. I think is the name of the place. Hey, sugar. Hey, That's sugar. cute. Oh, the hey, little sugar. boutique. This is so cute. The Can whole thing is on? adorable. And there's just not near enough people here shopping. Everyone's gone for the holiday. <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Onward Reserve. Sweet Paris. Call her on a So we're right across from main campus of Texas A&M right here in the center of town.
So we went through there and I just saw all the quality of the products and I realized what I have. Well, they told me there, hey, the ranch is down there in South Texas, right near Corpus Christi, where you are. So here we go. We're gonna take out, I'm gonna, we're headed now. I'm gonna take you to on the tour of the King Ranch and see what this is about. I only knew them from being on the Ford trucks. I knew there was a King Ranch package. I thought it was a mythical ranch, you know? I didn't know that it was from a ranch that was from like the 1800s and started off making their own saddles. And they were making their own saddles in such high quality that other people wanted their saddles. So they started making it for other people. Well, they still have what they call their saddle shop is where they sell all their leather goods. And man, do they, they do not skimp. Everything they make is quality. Stay in your lane, buddy. Even these gloves. Man, you should, I mean, they are, oh my goodness, they're soft. I bought them to, you know, connect the trailer or whatever. No, they're too nice for that. <laughs> Shane's got his King Ranch gloves on. Are my driving gloves? What? Driving gloves. Get a picture of his King Ranch here. He driving the beast on the back of the chair. People, people like to call it a beast. It's not a beast. This thing is nimble, like a gazelle. <laughs> So, these are our friends, David and Lisa. We're gonna put it here. Making our gut, making gonna, our, we're put it Where here. are we going, Lisa? The San Juan Basilica de San Juan. I don't know the whole name. In El Valle. <laughs> Google knew it. San Juan, uh, the Basilica de San Juan or uh, something. Virgin Church of Miracles. We're gonna go get blessed. And we're Catholic, that's what Catholics do. We like to go to Catholic places. <laughs> so what do you think about the ride back there? It's nice, nice ride. Is it a good ride? Nice, comfortable. Good company. Yes, very good company. Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad we all came. We all were tired. We're on our best we, behavior we woke up today. Going, started when I was 12. Yeah? Yeah, I'm 26 right now. 26? So You've been doing it a while. For a while, for a long while, yeah. Okay, well great. What's your name? Rudy. Rudy? Rudy, Rudy. Rendon, yeah. That's All right. right. Good to meet Thank you, sir. You so Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one. Have a blessed day, sir. We're here in McAllen, Texas. We're going to eat at Texas Day Brazil. I've, I've only eaten here in Orlando. It's a Brazilian steakhouse where they just keep bringing you meat. The secret I do here is when the cheap meat comes, I turn my red card on, and when the good meat comes, I turn the green card on. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's a good plan, right? Unless you like, unless you want to get full of chicken. Oh, please, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's just say I'm not going to be handling the poop hose with these. <laughs> Got my little mascot. <laughs> it's the Longhorn from the King Ranch. 
So anyway, we're gonna go check this out. I'm gonna check out the saddle shop deal. I, I, I can't, I don't know this in its original location, but we're gonna check out the official King Ranch saddle shop in Kingsville, Texas, where the ranch is. But we're also going to the ranch and we're gonna take their, we're gonna take their tour. Um, so you can, you can actually see what King Ranch is and I can see. Anybody that's watched any of my other videos in this channel knows I love my truck because I'll tell anybody that'll listen, hey, I got my F450. In half a mile, <laughs> turn right onto Farm to Market Road 70 North. I've even added to that Oh, I got my F450 King Ranch. <laughs> Though that little brag in there because I like it that much, you know. And, and it's just what I want to share from my heart is what I'm going through and what I like, you know. Because I'm, I'm just a little giddy about it. How you doing? Fantastic. Wow. Oh, thank you, my dad. We got the same one, don't we? Yes, sir. My wife said I can get some boots for my birthday. There you go. What kind of boots are we looking at getting? Those real smooth, square ones. Like they're square, but they're not like super square. Gotcha. You know? Well, if you want to take a look at them, more Well, thank you. What's what's on the um? I'm Shane, by the way. Do you know oh, I'm being okay? No, camera? I don't. Not at all. Okay. So that's awesome. Great, yeah. Yes, Daniel. Well, I bought a truck. It okay. was a King Ranch package. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a mythical thing that oh, was yeah. to afford, you know, <laughs> yeah, a lot for of ranchers or whatever. And yes, then sir. I found out it's real. I'm in Corpus Christi. Oh. I went to College Station. Y'all had a mm -hmm. store there. And yes, I was sir. like, whoa. Yeah. It, that actually exists. <laughs> and the ladies in there, I saw the quality of everything. I said, mm. wow. And the ladies there said that the ranch was here and yes, so sir. close. So I came out to see you. Awesome. Well, welcome for sure. Thank you so yes, much. Sir. Yeah, so y'all y'all make everything. I oh mean, yeah, yes sir. We make stuff for our guests. We make luggage. We make office supplies. Uh, we do have so Hibblers actually makes those bronze statues for us, and they have some busts that we have for sale, and that'll be the nail guy bus. Okay, so, nice. Yes sir. Great. So can you show me? Uh, man, everything's just so nice, huh? Oh yes sir. Can you uh, show me where the boots are? Yeah, it'll be right over here. <laughs> My dad got this at Landry's. Oh, very good. <laughs> Landry's Seafood in New Orleans. This is crazy. Hello. How are you? How are you doing? ones in a college station mm -hmm. kind of like with the square mm. yeah y'all got them there yeah these would be our Lucchese, uh, Lucchese boots. like the one he's just put up right yes. now mm -hmm. yep. yes sir yeah so Lucchese yeah we decided to do a partnership with them our cowboys wanted something more comfortable more durable out there when they're working so all of our Lucchese boots from uh, this one on are gonna have rubber sole so uh, they're, they're like a very comfortable boots all right so i wanted i wanted these but it hit me hit me weird see how clean that is rubbers so um, but it hit me weird on my arch but these what do you think about these yeah huh these nice Y'all approve of these? Good, I do too. Thank you. What's your name again? Daniel, sir. 
Daniel, I yes, appreciate sir. it, brother. No, no, no. Found me the beautiful purpose. Oh, yeah, and they are very beautiful. We had to work. Yes, sir. We had to work at it, but we got it. Mm -hmm. Y'all have a great day. I'm going to go Likewise. catch the tour. Awesome. Slight left onto King Ranch. We had originally planned the trip with our friends Lisa and David. We were going to Basilica de San Juan, and then we were going to go to the King Ranch in that trip. But after being at Mass and then going to eat at, at the Brazil Steakhouse, um, we ran out of time and found out that they didn't have uh, tours, any more tours left on Sunday. So here I am. I went back by myself to go on the tour and uh, you know buy those boots for my birthday so I'm pretty excited about that I'm wearing the boots as I'm riding on to the ranch here to go take the tour so it's it's all big fun for me at this point Because what we're driving through right now is called the colony. The colony is where any full-time King Ranch employee is allowed to live with their family. They do not own the homes. They do not own the plots. Once their job is up here at King Ranch, it's time to move out and go somewhere else. Open the door. Oh, thank you. Oh, too late. Thank you. They're so cute. So we're about to cross back over the Santa Gertrudis Creek and then we're going to be coming up towards our arena. And the arena is going to be where we usually hold our annual ranch hand breakfast. It's going to be the Saturday before Thanksgiving. It's the only day out of the year um, that the ranch is actually open to the public where you don't need to take a tour. You can come out here and you can watch the guys do roping demonstrations, um, eat some breakfast and things like that. Um, of course, um, this last year, <laughs> we served about 5,000 people, if not more. So it is a really big deal. It's something that you want to usually get your tickets in advance for. Um, we don't usually have like a max occupancy out here, you know, but eventually we do start to run out of food, <laughs> especially feeding over 5,000 people. But this arena was built in the 1950s and it was built after King Ranch stopped its annual auctions. It's used to have annual auctions and live sales of cattle and our horses. And that was held in large tents right here under this, um, in this courtyard area. We don't do any live sales of our horses anymore, but we do still do that of our cattle. And then of course we have our catalog and then we have our Breeders International building that you can always talk to if you wanted to purchase. On the other side of this bump gate here, there's that little white shack that's there. Um, that is the where the racetrack was when we were in the thoroughbred business and that was just the timing stands there. These two buildings that are here are admin and operational buildings. Um, today, I mean today is what they are, is our ad admin and operational buildings, but back then when we were in the thoroughbred business, these are actually used by the jockeys. This is where they would come in and have a break, some lunch, things like that, where people would gather after watching the races. So this is what it looks like for a working cowboy. This is his rig there with his truck, his trailer, and his horses. That's what it typically looks like, you know, and then once they get out to their pasture, they unload their horses and they get out there and they do their job that they've got to do. Um, super cool that we get to see them working up here with these young horses and actually riding and things like that because King Ranch is a working ranch, but sometimes people get really disappointed that you know they don't see someone working but you also need to take into consideration that we're 
825,000 acres that our cowboys take care of, so I can't always guarantee you that they're going to be up here close by us or something like that. Um, really frequent visitors to the San Antonio area. Now, Henrietta fell in love with the mission style buildings, and you can definitely see that she incorporated that with her buildings here around the ranch. This building to the right of us is going to be like a service center or a service garage, and it has always been one. This is where they would come and get like their vehicle serviced or I guess back then like their carriages worked on, their wheels. But this is where the cowboys bring all of their trucks, their trailers, things like that that they need done. Since King Ranch has its own gas plant, we have our own gas pumps out here. The employees have this fancy little gas card that they use that tracks how much, you know, they actually spend and things like that. This wooden barn that's here, I'm going to pull in front of it. Um, it might look familiar to some of you guys. They use it quite a bit in our Ford commercials when they're telling you all about King Ranch Ford. So let me pull out of the way here so you guys can look back and see it. So that there, you know, that's going to be our famous barn that's typically, you know, got a bunch of King Ranch Fords parked in front of it and then they do some kind of voiceover that tells you like King Ranch Fords in your budget, you know, you can afford it, sell an arm, a leg, your grandkids, <laughs> whatever you got to do to afford one. <laughs> So that's the only wooden barn that King Ranch has today. It was built between the 1920s and the 1930s by a gentleman named Mr. John Silva. Over here, this building to the right is going to be the only thing that would look familiar to Captain King if he was to come and visit the ranch today. The only reason it would look familiar is because it was remodeled in 1913 to match their main home after their original home burned down. Mr. King would have four guards at the top facing each direction just to keep a lookout over his ranch and to let him know of any unannounced guests that might be coming or just what was going on around the ranch itself. The middle of it is used for conferences and the bottom of it is used as an office now, but originally the bottom was used as a store um, for the employees to come over here and get whatever it was they were going to need for the week because the closest town was easily going to be a day's trip. So now we're going to drive in front of the main house. I'm not allowed to make a complete stop, but I do drive extremely slow. Can you open the door here, too? Um, well, the house is going to be on our left side oh, okay, rather than the other side. Well, open the left door. <laughs> <laughs> other one. So this home was started to be built in 1912, and it was not finished until 1915. This is because Henrietta could not stick to her budget. Now, her original budget for the home was $126,000. The final approximate cost for the home was $325,000, so she went way over budget, you know, just a smidge. The cannons that are out here, they are working cannons. It is said that Mr. King would typically sound them off on the 4th of July, so I'm sure you guys can imagine how much Henrietta loved that. Now the home is not occupied by anyone full time, it is more like a five star hotel for the family members. It is equipped with the full time staff. There is the bulldog statue that's there on the right hand side that was gifted to Mr. King because it said he had a bulldog personality when it came to his business dealings. There's an owl on top of this awning that's staring right at us. <laughs> then there is this peacock that's in front of us. And the reason that the peacock is here, and there's quite a bit of them, they might be in the trees, that's where they've been lately. Um, but the peacocks are here in honor of Miss King. If you guys read the tidbit in the visitor center about how much she disliked rattlesnakes, um, you guys know that she was paying a few nickels for rattlesnake rattlers. If you guys haven't read that, I definitely recommend that you go in the visitor center and do so. But the peacocks are here because they kill rattlesnakes and they're in honor of Miss King. Now, Miss King had two requirements. One was publicly known and the second was not. The first one was that everyone could be able to wear their boots in the home. Second was that her home was going to be fireproof because she was so traumatized from their first home fire. Well, she thought that if a fire was going to start, it was going to start in the kitchen. So she didn't even have the kitchen attached to her home. And that's going to be this long white building that's here. Now the bell that's there with the bell tower, that bell did come off of Mr. King's ship. Hmm. And it is said that during their first house fire, that their daughter Alice is going to be the one to run outside and she's going to ring that bell until the entire colony was awake and aware that their home was on fire. Now this home catches on fire after Mr. King has already passed away.
So Henrietta is a widow. After she becomes a widow, she would only wear very mournful colors. Typically, it was black, gray, lavender. Well, this particular night that their home catches on fire, she is wearing black. It is said that she comes out of the home dressed in black, carrying a briefcase full of important family papers. She's going to turn around and blow this house a kiss goodbye because it is the last house that she ever got to live in with her beloved husband. This building here on the left-hand side is going to be her carriage house. She would keep her horses on the left-hand side and her carriages on the right-hand side. The reason it says 1853 is because that is the year that Mr. King got to purchase the Santa Gertrudis land grant for three cents an acre. The 1909 is because that's the year the carriage house was built. Santa Gertrudis Ranch is on there instead of King Ranch because King Ranch did not officially become the King Ranch until 1934 whenever it became a corporation. Now there is one week out of the year that the entire King family comes down here and they all stay. If you guys are like me and you think that they would go insane living with their family under the roof for one week, they're allowed to stay in these smaller white houses here, which is just what we refer to as overflow housing. Um, like I said, they're more than welcome to stay there for privacy, things like that. Now, Henrietta and Mr. King had five children. They had three daughters and two sons, but only one son was going to be the one to take over the ranch. But Henrietta insisted all of her children were going to go to college and receive a higher education. But they did have five children and Henrietta insisted all of them go to college and receive an education. The youngest son is like, I'm not going and you can't make me. Well, she makes him. Mr. King's a good husband and he enforces it as well. And he tells his son, just go get your degree. I'll run the ranch until you get back. When you get back, it'll be in your hands. Well, unfortunately, this son never makes it back. While he's at school, he develops pneumonia and he passes away from it. This completely breaks Mr. King's heart. And he starts to realize, you know, maybe that his own health isn't the best, that it has completely started to deteriorate. And it's just, it's not the best. He becomes really worried about himself. And Henrietta has already been asking him for quite a while, you know, get your butt to the doctor. Let's go to San Antonio. We'll meet him at the Minger. Well, he finally agrees, but it's too late. When Mr. King arrives in San Antonio and meets with their doctor at the Minger Hotel, the doctor takes a few looks at Mr. King and just kind of hangs his head low and tells him, it's probably time that you start writing some final arrangements. Ooh, wow. You know, you've probably got a few days left to live. Just decide where you're going to live out your last days and write those arrangements. Mr. King is going to die of stomach cancer. Now, before he dies and before, you know, he starts to write all of this up, his daughter, Alice, is going to be in town one day, the same day that Mr. King has to go to court for a civil suit. Well, while he's there in court, he actually loses. All right. Now, this did not take Mr. King well, and he immediately decides, all right, anyone who could beat me needs to work for me. So, like a crazy man, he shows up at this lawyer's house. And this lawyer must have been just as crazy because he agreed to come back to the ranch with Mr. King and have some tea and discuss some business. Well, when they get over here to the ranch, oh, there's some Bob White Quill on the right-hand side. They ran super fast. I didn't want to stop <laughs> really fast because there's a car behind me and I'm <laughs> not trying to get us bumped. <laughs> but so Mr. King, you know, he has his daughter Alice make the tea and bring it to the meeting room. Well, it is said that as soon as Alice walked in the room and her and this lawyer locked eyes, that it was instantly love at first sight. After that, it didn't take any kind of persuasion for Mr. Robert Justice Claywork to agree to become the ranch lawyer. Just a little bit after that, he asked for Alice's hand in marriage. Of course, Mr. King is ecstatic about this. You know, the ranch lawyer, you know, this is just, it's going to be great. All the way around, it's going to be great. Well, Mr. King isn't around to see them actually become married. He passes away before this. But in his final arrangements, he writes that Robert is to be the, ban the ranch lawyer. He is to help Henrietta hands-on. He is to take on like a manager type position. That Henrietta is the rightful owner and she will always be. Well, Mr. King passes away a year after his death. 
Alice and Robert are married. They wanted to make sure they were very respectful in mourning the loss of her father. Alice and Robert have five children of their own, and it's actually their descendants who are the ones who are hands-on with the ranch and are actually taking over the ranch today. We are on our late fifth, early sixth, and seventh generation of family members. Of course, when a lady gets married, she takes on her husband's last name. So that's how we have more than just the King name associated with King Ranch, but it is still family owned. It is still all of the family. It's a private company. Now there's so much history I could have told you guys. I wish I could have told you guys, but an hour and a half just isn't ever enough time it feels like. But I hope that you guys had a great day out here with me.